There is a common perception that people in the past led an idyllic village lifestyle, that honour and honesty pervaded social groups in a way which doesn't happen today. Life back then was simpler, and so were the concerns of day-to-day -day life, and people had a more virtuous outlook on the world. However, the truth is that all of these virtues have always been hand-in-hand -hand with our more Machiavellian tendencies. The ancient Roman writer Pliny the Elder had a series of complaints and observations about his society. One of them was to do with alcoholic beverages and their popularity amongst the masses. Wine was popular throughout Roman society, from the very best parties to the very lowest bar rooms. This was particularly true for Valerian wine, so much so that he noted that many unscrupulous merchants had begun to develop wines which tasted very similar, so that almost anyone in society could apparently afford the best. He complained that when you went to a party, you weren't quite sure whether you were getting the good stuff or not. Between 336 and 323 BC, the empire of Alexander the Great extended from the Mediterranean to northern India. From this empire, many coins floated up through northern Europe. These coins showed the likeness of Alexander or his father, often with a horse on the reverse. The Iron Age people of Europe immediately began to imitate this coinage, copying the imagery in a way which honoured themselves. The images became increasingly abstract as time progressed, and it is thought that they were used not as coins, but as jewellery. In the Bronze Age of Eastern Denmark, fraudulent activity was often fuelled by a need for display. In Borum, a series of burial mounds were excavated and found to contain a series of oak coffins. The people within the coffins and those who had done the burying clearly had access to wealth and trade, and they displayed it in the grave. Not least a young man, who was buried with all the trappings of life, including a fine sword. At the burial ceremony, people would have commented on this fine weapon being buried with the young man. However, archaeologists found inside a dagger, not a sword. It seemed his family wanted the appearance of wealth without wasting the metal. The semi-precious mineral turquoise has always been prized for its depth of colour and luster. Some of the most famous examples of jewellery include turquoise in their design, and in ancient Egypt, people came to desire this colour for themselves. In response to this desire, ancient craftspeople created a glazed earthenware product called faience, and with this, people could make all sorts of objects which looked as though they were made from a far more expensive material than they in fact were. Fraud to look good. Towards the end of the first millennium AD, the Vikings were building a fierce reputation for themselves as fierce warriors. But they were also prolific tradesmen, and it was this trade which gave them access to fine blacksmith techniques and weaponry. Much of Northern Europe were making pattern-welded swords, literally weaving iron and steel together. However, the very best swords had a high carbon content, and Ulfbert became an early brand name for fine swords, their name inscribed upon the blade. Tradesmen could gain three times the price for a normal sword, and some unscrupulous tradesmen decided to start inscribing Ulfbert onto inferior blades, thus tripling their profit. It is thought that one in four Ulfbert blades in Europe were in fact fakes, fraudulently sold. The ancient Greeks are renowned for a sense of beauty and elegance. Their symposiums, their wine parties, are recorded for all to see on the side of pots, with beauty and elegance pervading, particularly the women and their taste in clothes and jewellery. Sumptuous and elegant gold jewellery was very popular, but gold was a limited commodity, and to have the appearance of solid gold beads, craftsmen would take two small pieces of gold, shape them into cups, and stuff it with sand, thus creating the appearance of a larger piece of gold than was actually there. Whether it be tradespeople out to make a quick extra profit, or people seeking the appearance of fine things to outcompete their neighbours, or simply an attempt to make beauty affordable for all, archaeology shows that people have always had a curious relationship with the fraudulent and the false, the lies and the little white lies.